Hi, boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are embarking on a journey through our home links for fourth grade everyday math. We are on Unit 1, Lesson 1, Home Links 1.1, Place Value in Whole Numbers. So I'm going to demonstrate a few problems for you, but I'm going to leave the rest for you to practice on your own. So let's take a look at the first problem right here. The 8 in... 203810 is worth what? So when I read those digits one after another, it doesn't give us a sense of the value. But if I use a uh, number of words to describe this and say the word aloud, 203,810, I can hear that the 8 in that place value is worth 800. Okay. Now, maybe I didn't know that the 8 in that position is 800. What I can do here is I can just take that digit, 8, and then put one, two zeros behind it. And when I look at that number with just the digit 8 and two zeros behind it as place value holders, and I compare it to my chart up here for place value, I can see that a number that has a digit and then two zeros behind it is in the so this would be worth 800. Now, compare it to the 7 in 573090, this number right here. Okay, I would have to, again, write out the digit 7 and then place the number of zeros that is equivalent to the number of places that are behind the 7 in that number. One, two, three, four. So then when I compare that amount to my place value chart up here, I can see that a digit with four zeros behind it is worth 10,000 of that amount. So seven groups of 10,000, otherwise known as 70,000. So when I read this number aloud again, I would read it 573 thousand and ninety okay and the value of the seven in that number is seventy thousand so I'm just going to use my pen and I'm going to stick a little comma there because every time you identify a number that has more than three place values you're gonna throw in a comma to separate groups of three starting from the right hand side and working your way towards the left so this is 70,000. I would not put a comma after uh, going from left to right. Okay? Let's take a look at this story problem. How does the value of the digit 4 in 489 differ from the value of 4 in 5,741? Okay? Well, again, that's just all about the position of the digit in the number. Now, again, as a reminder... When a number has more than two place values, we describe each part of the number as a digit. Kind of like a word will be built from more than one letter. C-A-T spells cat. Each letter uh, helps the reader understand the meaning of the word. Now, if I were to change one of the letters, say the k hard C k cat to b b bat, uh, the meaning of the word is different. So by changing one letter within a string of letters, I've changed the meaning of the word. The value of the number is determined by the placement of the digits within the number. Okay? So how does the value of the digit 4 in 489, right here, differ from the value of the digit 4 in 5,741, okay? So even without knowing how to read those numbers correctly, I can just look at the number of digits behind the 4, and I see that there are 2, okay? So that would be represented like this, 4, 0, 0. And when I look at my place value chart up top, a digit with two zeros behind it is worth... Uh, hundreds. So 400 zero, zero is 400. But when I look at 5,741 and I write down the 4 with just one zero behind it, I can see right away that number is in the tens. 
here in my place value chart, I see six tens because there's a six with a zero behind it. Four tens, or 40, is a four with a zero behind it. Okay, so how do those two values of the digit four compare? Well, simply put, the, oops, let me move that a little bit. There we go. The 4 in 489 is worth 400, while the 4 in 5,000, comma, 741 is only worth 4 tens, or 40. And that's it, boys and girls. That's all you'd have to do. Now, if you didn't word it exactly the way I did, that's okay. Um, everybody has their own personal style. As long as you make the connection that the 4 in 489 is in the hundreds, while the 4 in 5,741 is in the tens. Um, these problems should uh, remind you of the problems that you may have done with your math teacher in lesson 1.1. Uh, in your math journal. So if you have questions about how to solve the rest of these problems, you would consult your math journal. Okay? All right. So if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, uh, we will talk again soon. Thanks.